And now it's time for learning more about our lives as students, our body as humans, and our future as happy, healthy people. The APU and AUV Podcast Network presents the Student Health and Happiness Podcast with your host Russell Freeman. Welcome, everyone, to our American University in Vietnam podcast. This is the Health and Happiness Show. I'm Dr. Russell Freeman, AUV professor of health science and philosophy and a chiropractic physician from the United States. In today's health and happiness discussion, we're going to take a closer look at music and its importance and influence, or as we will answer the question, why music? Is music just about listening and taking our mind off of our daily lives? Well, our guest today is Professor Ralph Millsap. Professor Millsap has been a musician uh, since childhood and earned a Bachelor of Music degree from Georgia State University. Then he moved to Chicago to become a student of virtuoso trumpeter and designer Ronald Schilke. In fact, Professor Ralph uh, still plays the trumpet and included in his ability to play trumpet amazingly is he's still playing that Shilke X3 model that was um, owned and devi- and developed by this amazing musician. So I'd like to welcome you, Professor, to our show. Yeah, good to be with you. So let me ask you the question, why music? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting question and some, one that I think um, most of us never consider seriously. But we need to understand that music has always been with us. It's always been a part of the human experience. We have evidence that uh, hunter-gatherers had some kind of music in their lives. We've got archaeological evidence of musical instruments. And if we just do some creative analysis, it, it makes very good sense that that as the hunter-gatherers worked up their hierarchy of needs, that they'd, they'd reach some point that they were around the, the campfire one night and somebody just picks up a hollow log and starts tapping on it. And, and someone says, well, I'm warm, I'm fed, we're, there is no threat, and somebody stands up and starts to move. And we've got music, we've got dance, and, and it's begun. It's a part of human society from the very beginning. And then at 10,000 years ago, we discover agriculture, and now we continue. And out of agriculture, we get cities, and from cities, we get empires. And now we have strong, more formidable evidence that music was very much a part of the lives of ancient Egypt, Greece, Rome, Persia. It's been there from, from the very beginning. When I listen to this historical uh, overview that you just gave us, I think about my own life, and um, music must be part of the human condition. It has to be connected to us in some way because I went through all those stages as a kid too. I grew up listening and loving music without ever being taught to love it. It was just an innate thing to do, to be attracted to to pleasant music and sounds and singing and instruments and beating a drum and all that sort of thing. Uh, And it's become no less important to me as I've gotten older. In fact, there have been times in my life where without music, I don't think I would have had anything holding me together or connecting me perhaps to other people or nature. So what is it about human beings that makes music so natural for us? I I, I can't answer that. I can't answer why I can only tell you that I know it is and that and for me personally I I know when I don't have it I feel that something's missing in my life just in the same way I might feel I've missed a meal or someone I care about has gone away it's it's so internal that it's something that I have to have in my life I want music playing or I want to be playing music I want to be singing and I think this is a natural condition for most people why is it when the people around us are performing some menial task. You know, maybe someone from housekeeping is mopping the floor. Why do they hum? Why do they start singing? Why do I hear people on the motorbikes here in Da Nang? They ride by me, and, and they're letting loose with some Vietnamese tune. It's, it's a part of us as human beings. I think it plugs us into the natural rhythm of life, which 
everybody has their own rhythm in life. And different kinds of music sort of elicit that connection, I guess. That's why people, different people like different kinds of music. But we as human beings, we seek patterns. We are a pattern-seeking critter. We do it from the time we're a little kid, and we do it even more as we, as we age. So patterns and predictability and, and harmony seem to be kind of all connected. There's a certain satisfaction to hearing a song that's well-constructed, a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's the right harmonies, the right timing, kind of keeps us waiting for what we know is coming, and we're satisfied when it comes. There's this certain kind of critical aspect to all music that seems to satisfy our needs for for patterns and predictability and, and surprises too. How does that play out at different stages of either becoming a musician or learning to appreciate music as you get older? Well, I think if you're going to be a student of music, you have to understand musical form. But I think something that's lost on most of us is that what we enjoy in music is grounded in the form of our bodies. In those early days when we're the hunter-gatherers and we're, we're tapping on that log and somebody stands up and starts to move, they're going to move in a way that, that flows naturally from a symmetrical body. I have an arm and a leg on my right side. I got an arm and a leg on my left side. So I'm gonna, if I'm going to dance and it's spontaneous, I'm going to take some motion on my right side, and then I'll probably repeat it on my left side, which means most music that we enjoy today is in an even meter. We'll count it in two, in four, or in eight. That flows directly from the forms of our bodies. And then other forms that are more sophisticated, such as symphonic form or sonata form, uh, those all are also built up upon that. Maybe it would be helpful, at least from my understanding, can we define music as something other than songs? What, how would you define what music is? What constitutes music? Are, are the dances that uh, the that soccer players play from the, the Fiji tribal ferocity? The haka. The, yeah. the haka thing. That's music. Symphony is music. Uh, rap is music. Birds sing songs. Well, can, is there a, a can we find a definition that kind of works for for this huge word? Many have tried to def define it. Um, I'm not sure that anyone has actually captured the meaning in its in its entirety. There's a contemporary composer named Paul Hinnemith who I have great respect for, and uh, he also wrote a great deal about music. And he said, "Music is motion in time and space." But with all the respect that I have I have for him, I I can't accept his definition because if that's music, that means every human physical motion is music and it probably falls into the category of, of dance. If that's true, the motion of everything is music where I might say, okay, there's some musical quality there, but I probably won't recognize it as music. And with fear of sounding arrogant, I have my own definition of music and that is it's the auditory motion of time and space for the purpose of artistic expression. Now, I, I'm much more comfortable with that, but many people would disagree with that. Um, there was an experimental composer, out advent guard composer, um, named John Cage, who was active for a long time. He was a musical composer and a choreographer. And he composed a composition called Four Minutes and 33 Seconds. I'll perform it for you now. Well, we'll stop short. What was Cage's point? He composed, composed a piece of music that is entitled 4 minutes and 33 seconds, but it requires no skill to perform it. Anyone can do it. All it requires is someone to sit quietly and listen to the noises, the sounds around them in their environment for four minutes and 33, question, 33 seconds. That poses questions as to the definition of music. Does music have to be composed and rehearsed? Does it have to be formal music? Or 
is music so much a part of the human condition because everything around us is music? Professor Ralph, I know that everybody has the capacity to enjoy and appreciate music, but not everybody, at least in their own minds, has the ability to create. But I think music itself can cause a creative spurt to occur in us. And in our next episode, I'd like to explore more about this topic with you and relate it to John Cage, who was one of the great experimenters in music and how silence can be considered music also. So I'd like to thank all of our listeners for coming to us today. And thank you for your time, Ralph. We'll see you next time.